How's everyone doing? I want to just give a round of applause. Fantastic presentations, fantastic crowd. Thank you everyone for hosting us here. I am Rashimini with Cellular Farms and we grow molecules, all right? I think you can figure out how we do that from that picture, but basically you're about to witness my life's work. Don't laugh, but I'm a professional vertical farmer. I've been doing this for 12 years. Um, I got, you know, moved from Iran to Chicagoland, fell into a physics department, learned about entrepreneurship, learned about vertical farming, and I was early in that industry and helped write the rules and regs for urban agriculture in Chicago, which ended up through the Illinois Department of Ag and the USDA scaling across the country. So a lot of the safety protocols um, were uh, done by us. And I, can you help me out here, Juan? I have no idea what just happened. Thank you so much. All right, so my founder and I, Stephen Lewis, uh, we make a really great combination, excellent decision makers, bootstrappers. I'm the technical co-founder, he's the business co-founder, and together we are working part-time on this passion project of ours, which is solving vertical farming. So I sold my last company, Farmbox Systems, to a $40 million vertical farming company called Wilder Fields in 2016. I thought, you guys got the capital, you have my platform, you're gonna solve this dire problem, but no one has yet to figure out vertical farming. Everyone's trying, no one has solved it, and you know no one has solved it because there is so much capital waiting in the commercial real estate market for someone to figure this out. As soon as they did, they'd be nationwide. And I can go into brutal detail about every single one of these systems and exactly why they failed from a mechanical perspective. But it ultimately is the system design and that's something we have solved at Cellular Farms. So we call ourselves Cellular Farms because we're growing plants. We're farming plant cells who are making the molecules that we're selling. Plants are excellent, excellent bioreactors. And our ability to spin up a farm is 10 times faster than everyone else. Our ability to generate output from those farming systems is over 10 times others. And our costs are 50% less. It's truly a new paradigm for vertical farming. And what we're doing with that uh, looks a little bit like this. So it's a very unique process. We are controlling molecules of water, of air, photons, individually as we can to generate really clean, healthy crops. And then they're cured in a way that makes them more bioavailable. And you might be thinking, what is this guy talking about? Well. There is a lot of intellectual property that we will be patenting around the whole process. So there's biophysics in the water, molecular, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, water microclusters are going to be basically delivering plant fertilizer ions at the, uh, to the plant root. Uh, everything about our system is different, highly patentable, and we're not wasting our precious capacity selling salads. So everyone else right now is selling salads, trying to go wholesale, national, five bucks a pound. The entire market for salads, every fancy salad in the US is under five billion. We are growing supplements. Our supplements are in the first in the weight loss and skincare market. That's a total of $150 billion. And we're the only ones able to do this because of our technical solution our technology. Our first supplement line, I spun up a brand, I'm a consumer marketer called Beam Botanical. We're selling a raw sulforaphane. And you're gonna be hearing about sulforaphane for the next 50 years. It's probably the most important molecule of our lifetimes. There probably will be a Nobel Prize because of its um, incredible properties. It's a diabetes and skin supplement. It's way more profitable than salads and we have the only way to grow it. So we're generating sales on the consumer channel through user-generated content. People are taking our supplement right now and losing tens of pounds. Their PSA levels are dropping. Their skin is clearing up. It's really powerful stuff, and we know there's a viral effect there. I've learned from viral TikTok marketers uh, how to do this, and it's working really well. And we have the only indoor farm-grown supplement uh, that, that just adds a great story to it. So our first product, sulforaphane, is a $10 billion market. It hits multiple large markets. It's not a fad, it's very well studied. 
and it's perfect to direct to consumer. It's very profitable on a unit economic basis. We control the supply because we're the only ones that can grow it, and it has a media moment because of Ozempic and the new uh, set point theory for obesity. So we're the only real source of myrosinase, and this is a critical enzyme that creates sulforaphane, and ours is 400% more active. Everyone we show it to wants to buy it, wants to distribute it, wants to uh, use it. We've done very good with very little money. So 50 grand in bootstrap funds, we've generated $84,000 in sales to a top 10 supplement company. We have 250 in the pipeline and we have a D2C brand. We have a hybrid B2C, B2B model, but very flexible. We're a biomanufacturer, it's the same product, it's just going into different channels. Instead of $5 a pound, we're selling at $400 to $1,800 a pound. Our biggest problems are capital. We have too much demand. B2B clients need a lot of testing. It's very expensive. They're very slow to onboard. And then our market, our D2C brand is really marketing driven. So we're waiting to go viral, but we could buy customers today. We have an excellent 24 month growth plan. It is cutting edge. It's proven. It's my day job. I, I help you know, really, really cutting edge startups. We're raising 1.2 to 40X our revenue. File some patents, get new accounts. And the goal is to have dozens of these facilities nationwide growing for the supplement industry, but also pharma, pesticide, and of course, salads as well. Thank you so much, and uh, thanks for having us. Well, now you can take a pill. Um, okay, so, you know, I've been in ag for 20 years, so I know the space pretty well. And you have, I think, a classic founder um, problem, maybe both you two, and that's that you know way too much. Because I can't tell if you're building a farm, if you're selling other people a way to build a farm, if you're growing things for output or yield, if you're making actual products and supplements, and maybe it's all of that, but I can't tell. And so, in the early days, of capital, I suspect you're going to be going to people who have already placed bets in agriculture and ag tech, and there's a lot of them around, especially around RTP. I would like to see, I would like to see it just a little bit more uh, clear and narrow the path from start to finish about what the actual product is. I mean, I, I kind of got it at the end. I think it's supplements. Sounds like you can grow them uniquely. Are you growing them? Are you letting other people grow them? There's a B2B component, so maybe you're also white labeling your system or creating a system that other people can grow those inputs and then make their own supplements. Like, I kind of can figure it out, but it, I, I would have liked to have seen just a maybe a flow chart or something visual to, that just shows you the path and, and at what what places you, you monetize. Um, so can, can maybe I, uh, play, yeah. Absolutely, so uh, fundamentally we're selling crops, dried, powderized for our end user to extract the molecules from. We're selling them to supplement companies that want this myrosinase, they can't get it anywhere else, there's a growing body of knowledge supporting sulforaphane, and then we're taking that same exact powder instead of selling it bulk at $500 a pound, we're packaging it and selling it to consumers for $1,800 a pound. So at the end of the day, we're biomanufacturers. We're the best at growing. No one else can use our systems without us involved. And maybe down the line, we can license. But for now, we're selling out, or the output of our systems. That's a four slide pitch. So I, I love science. Um, but I would say, I'm going to take a completely divergent path. Everybody knows red wine is good for you, right? I, <laughs> I, I didn't know that. But it, it's, yeah. it's the resveratrol. Sure, That's sure, it, right? absolutely. Do you know how many bottles of red wine you have to drink in order to get enough of it to have health benefits? Uh, more than your liver could probably take, right? It's like 500 cases yeah. a day, yeah. right? So there was a commercial, I'm not kidding. If you read the study, you got to drink that much. So there is a company that made a pill that actually took that particular component, shrunk it down, and you, you take one pill, right? That's all you need to say, right? So we're taking the 800 salads you need, to, you need to eat, and we're making it a powder. 
So if you took, if you made one graphic that, and I don't know that's what you're doing, but if you stacked up a bunch of salads and said, Dr. Shante, here's all the salads you had to eat in order for you to get all the whatever component, um, or you could take a spoonful of this. You just cut out all those slides. And I think the science behind it is only important to the scientist. Sure. It's probably not even important to the business owner because what they're, um, the business you're selling it to, what they hear is the market potential. So same thing that Steve's kind of saying is you've got a lot of detail and the detail is important for all this other stuff. I think I enjoyed um, hearing about it, um, but if I was going to write you a check tomorrow, I would go, okay, now what now? So backing it up, um, I am interested right here. Perfect. Um, talk to me a little bit about this. So, you know, a typical vertical farming company raises tens of millions, hundreds of millions. They can't make their farms profitable. Mm -hmm. We are profitable on a single lab space. So we have 700 square feet at UNCC. We had a prototype that we're solving this problem, an engineering problem. Mm -hmm. It can grow so well that we immediately monetized our prototype. So that's where we're at right now. It's generated 84K. That same customer oh. wants 250. Okay. What are you selling me? Is it the supplement or the prototype? Because I heard two different products, and I think that's what Steve was getting to. You're telling it, me how valuable your prototype is. You're also telling me that your supplement is what you're selling. So I appreciate that the prototype is what's enabling your supplement, but if what you want is a very clear here's the problem, here's the solution, this is our first product. This is the back end of why we can scale so fast. That's perfect. That's it. Sure. And Bio manufacturing is expensive. We have a better way to manufacture exactly. inputs into the ever-growing and massive supplement marketplace. And we are going to be in the consumer side with our first brand. Here it is. That's a $5 billion opportunity. Like, that's it. Like, no, in the end, I don't think that anybody cares that you're vertical farming. Right, it's just the technology. It's, it's just technology, technology you're using to manufacture. Yep. You're an advanced manufacturer, but what you really have is a, a, what some... likely is to be patents <laughs> on unique inputs for a, a crazy market of supplements, yep. right? So that's really the space that you're entering. So I, I think that that's really, that's what we're both saying is like the business here is is the biomanufacturing business. And what the story you're telling is that these molecules are incredibly valuable to others and to yourselves to bring unique consumer products to market. Like, that's the business. Yes. It, part of the reason why it threw me is because I am in ag. I've been in ag for 20 years. And so when you say vertical farming, it says something very specific. And it's not to make stuff for supplements. It's to solve, right, you know, urban, you know, access to food. And, you know, it, it solves all sorts of local farming issues. It's to get, you know, less big chemicals out of giant farms in the Midwest. It's like, you know, it's it's not that. It's not what you described, right? So your expertise is obviously incredible and hugely valuable, but that's not what people think of when they think of vertical farming. So I, I think a touch just to say this is our – we have a unique manufacturing process, relies on vertical farming, and oh, by the way, we're both incredible experts there, but here's really what we're doing. Like that's where I feel like you could get f further quicker in the conversation, that's all. Absolutely. No, that's, that was perfect. So almost saying that top part, that, that's not necessary – this middle part is, you know, that's that's a good part of traction, right? Yes, you made revenue on the, the back end, and that's in your chart, but you don't need to tell us about it necessarily. And then flip forward, because you started to talk about your marketing plan. I think you ran out of time. And I want to know a little bit about this. And we got two minutes, so in 30 seconds, tell me about it, and then I'll be quiet. So I'm a consumer marketing expert, growth expert. Um, TikTok right now is this major opportunity for a TikTok shop going viral. The cost of customer acquisition is like nothing. We can do it because we're getting user-generated content from people taking our supplement and losing weight. Uh -huh. That's just a free advertisement that yeah. can go viral and we can push it. So Perfect. we're on the Flip app. We can own keywords that no one else is targeting around diabetes supplement, TikTok shop, and then to build demand for a commercial plant. Perfect. A couple other things, just uh, from a more technical plan standpoint. So it's a it's a rare team that can be in manufacturing and 
consumer products, okay? And I'm not saying you should or shouldn't or that you're not capable. I'm just saying it's rare. So you're going to want to do a lot in a pitch to, to help people understand why you're great at both. I got from your pitch why you have incredible vertical and farming expertise and how that could lend to this. I didn't get from your pitch, here's why you know, we're the team to bring an incredible consumer brand through supplements to the space. So I, I would want to kind of have those – if you're going to have them both, have, have them separated, or if they're in phases, you know, you can break them out that way. So that's one thing. The other thing that I think um, you, is, and this is for everyone who's got a pitch, if as an investor, if you are going to put up on a slide that you have IP, you better, you better be ready because I'm going to come looking in every last corner for that IP, and I'm going to make you prove that it's defensible. So – I bet you do is my bet because you guys are really smart and you've been here for a long time, but you better be prepared. And so I say that to say, if that's critical to a fundraise, then it's absolutely critical. You put it up there and you defend yourself. You better have all the detail and the right attorneys and all that fun stuff. But if it's not critical to your fundraise or to your business, if you don't think it is, at least in the first phase, I would avoid the topic mm. because so far I've been in maybe a dozen IP disputes over the history of my career. I've never seen an entrepreneur win one, not once, okay, ever. So I'm not saying you don't have it, and it's not hugely valuable, but if you do have it and it's important, make a big deal out of it. And if it's not as important, I would avoid the topic generally in your pitches. It's just a word. Because it introduces – You got any IPSP? Chris? You probably do, don't you? No, I don't. I've, I've been working for 35 years. I don't have a single bit of IP yet. I do. Okay. Um, <laughs> Anywho, well, um, I think you've got at least a couple of different products. I think repackaging your pitch to be laser focused on the thing that's going to lead is what we're really driving you towards because it's clearly something that people will get and understand and we already are all falling for anyways with various, you know, weight loss, eat your greens, drink your greens, whatever. So lean into that. I know it's very hard to lean out of your passion, which is clearly the farming aspect. It's very difficult. Um, lean out of that. Um, Push it to the appendix, maybe. Yeah, or somebody's going to ask you, and when they do, yep. you just eat it up. Yep. But make sure you lead with the product that you are actually trying to sell is what we're really saying. The point about the farming that's hugely important is that you, you, can, you couldn't nor <laughs> – you shouldn't have to be my microphone person. You, you – is that uh, typically boutique – manufacturing like this is insanely capital intensive and you're not raising very much capital. It's like a million or whatever bucks. So I think what is important or interesting about it is that you guys have a kind of, of manufacturing expertise based on your experience in vertical farming that is going to be insanely capital efficient. Right, and that's huge for investors because if I'm looking at a deal like this and I'm like, oh, that's great, he can he can produce a few bottles of the thing, but how about if somebody wants to order 10 million of them? Like, what's the capital expense associated with scaling manufacturing? And your answer is, it's not what you would think. It's a lot cheaper because of our expertise. That becomes an interesting investment thesis to me for sure. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you, everybody.